Welcome to another biblically-based look into today's news from Christian Voice New Zealand. Now here's Mike Bain. Hi, when you get to my age, you ponder about the next generation and the one following that. Yes, I am playing the age card today. My wife Mandy and I have been blessed with nine grandchildren, and we're watching them grow up all too quickly. Electronic devices are a big part of their lives, and this is reflected in the ability of all my grandchildren, who are electronically literate at all ages and smarter than me when it comes to using my smartphone. Yeah, I often get that look, you know, the one where their little eyes just roll up into the top of their heads and you can hear the exasperation of, as they think, oh, really? Like most kids, though, they haven't got a clue about the good old days when we were growing up and the advantages that we had. And this brings me to today's topic, grandparents. Now, if you've been blessed like we have, you'll enjoy the chance to rectify the mistake with your grandchildren, which you made with their mum and dad the appearance. But the sad thing is, in today's fast-track society, we sometimes forget to sit down with our grandies and tell them stories about their mum and dad growing up and your time growing up with your own parents. We do forget about the advantages that we had, not to be pressured to have the latest computer game, or the fact that we just had mum and dad to ourselves. There were no step-parents, half-brothers or sisters in our lives to complicate things. But it's important we talk to our children, share with them our stories, so they'll get a sense of who we are, who they are, and more importantly, who we are as a family, why we believe in the things we do, why we act the way we do, and above all, why God is important as part of the family. Now, the Apostle Paul had some sage advice about affection for each other when writing to the congregation in Corinth. And when you start down the track of telling your kids your stories, just note how you feel. There's going to be this warmth as the memories flood in, and your children will note it as well. But back to Paul. He said we're to open wide our hearts and not withhold our affection. You know, we're admonished to speak, our, speak to our children about God and his love and his commandments. Deuteronomy 11, familiar. Teach them to your children, talking about them when you sit at home and when you walk along the road, when you lie down and when you get up. It's a strange world and everyone's different, but love has never changed. Now, my wife is not your standard nana to our grandchildren. She refers to herself as a funky nana in that she dresses and acts differently as a typical stereotype nana. Now, I grew up without grandparents, so I have no recollection of the warmth and the love of having a nana. I could only go by pictures and stories from others. Now, someone kindly sent me a story recently, which I'm about to share about the woman that they called Nana. Maybe through the story you'll have the feeling of warmth that I spoke about earlier as you reflect on your own special lady you had in your life as a woman officially known as maybe Granny, Grandma, Oma, Nona, or plain old Nana. Now, my correspondent started off by saying that they thought kids nowadays don't know what an apron is. The principal use of Nana's apron was to protect the dress underneath because she only had a few. It was also because it was easier to wash aprons than dresses, and aprons used less material. But along with that, it served as a potholder for removing hot pans from the ovens. It was wonderful for drying children's tears, and on occasion was even used for cleaning out dirty ears. And from the chicken coop, the apron was used for carrying eggs, fussy chicks, and sometimes half-hatched chicks to be finished in the warming oven. Now, when company came, those aprons were ideal hiding places for shy kids. And when the weather was cold, well, Grandma wrapped it around her arms, and those big old aprons wiped many a perspiring brow bent over the hot wood stove. Now, chips and kindling wood were brought into the kitchen from that apron. From the garden, it carried all sorts of veggies. After the peas had been shelled, it carried out the holes. In autumn, the aprons were used to bring in the apples that had fallen from the trees. When unexpected company drove up the road, it was surprising how much furniture that old apron could dust in a matter of seconds. And when dinner was ready, Grandma walked out onto the porch and she waved her apron and the, and the guys knew it was time to come in from the fields for dinner. It'll be a long time before somebody invents something that will replace that old-time apron that served so many purposes. But remember, Grandma used to set a hot baking on the windowsill to cool. Her granddaughters set theirs on the windowsill to thaw. To be honest, they'd go crazy now trying to figure out how many germs are on that apron. My correspondent said in finishing, 
I don't think I ever caught anything from an apron except love. Thank you for watching. You can see more podcasts like this by subscribing to Christian Voice New Zealand. For more information about our work or if you're moved to donate, jump online to our webpage, christianvoicenewzealand.com.